Hello and welcome. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. I'm excited to share this fun interactive card using the Merry and Bright stamp set from Spellbinders. This is from their House Mouse Christmas collection and I've made a swinging pendulum card. I thought this stamp set was perfect for this type of card and what's great about this is that it doesn't require any specialty dies and it was really quite easy to make. So let me show you how I did this. So I've taken a sheet of Nina Solar White Classic Crest cardstock and I've cut it in half and I've placed it in my Misty stamping platform. And since these are rubber stamps, I removed the foam piece that I normally keep in my Misty for clear stamps. And I've placed the image of the mouse swinging on the Christmas lights plus the two sentiments on one end so that I can stamp this out twice. I always like to stamp two images in case I mess up on one. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink since it's Copic marker friendly. And I stamped it a few times since I didn't get enough ink on the mouse's ear the first go around. And since the mouse is pretty dark already, I didn't think that a dark gray was needed to color him in. So I decided to start with the lightest warm gray color, which is W0. After I colored him in all over, I brought in W2 to make some of the areas a little bit darker. And then for the light string, I tried to match the green as close as I could to the green cardstock that I'm using for the background panel. So I started with G29 pine tree green. And then I brought in G24 for the lighter shade. And then for the red lights, I used R46 and then filled in the rest of the light with R35. Next, I used my Fiskars spring assist scissors to fussy cut him out. Now I have to admit this is not my favorite thing to do and because this little mouse has lots of hairs I didn't want to have to try to cut around each one so I decided to leave a white border all the way around it a little bit larger than what I would normally do. So now that I have my image colored and almost cut out <laughs> Let me show you the supplies that I've used to make this card. I used a red piece of cardstock that measures 4 and 1 8 by 5 and 3 8 and a green piece that I cut down to 4 by 5 and a quarter. And I'm using this Spellbinders Forever Green embossing folder for the green panel since it looks like a Christmas tree and I thought it, it would be perfect for this stamp. Um, I also used some double sided tape that's a quarter inch wide for the weight on the pendulum portion and then I decided to use some washers instead of a penny just because they're a little bit smaller and thinner. Now you can always use a penny but I bought this box from a local hardware store a while back and it was pretty cheap. You'll also need some foam tape, some foam circles, and a white or white embossing powder. Off camera, I went ahead and placed the green panel inside the forever green embossing folder and I ran it through my die cutting machine. Now since this mouse will be swinging back and forth, I used the deboss side, which is the one that's indented. If I use the emboss side, I thought it might catch while it's swinging on the side that's embossed. And I'm using my favorite new tool, the Misty Precision Glue Press to add glue to the embossed side to attach it to the red panel. And since there's a lot of raised areas on this side, I'm applying a little bit more glue than what I normally would just to make sure that it sticks. Now I'm taking the cutout image and placing it on top so I'd know where to cut my hole toward the top. You can use a small circle die to cut this out, but if you plan on using an embossing folder like I'm doing, you'll want to use a hole punch or crop a dial. If you've already embossed your panel, you don't want to run it back through your die cutting machine because it will flatten it out. But I used the biggest hole on my crop dial and it looked like it was going to be big enough at the time. So next I made the arm to create the swinging mechanism. I used a scrap piece of white heavyweight cardstock that measures a half inch by two inches and then I rounded off the edges so that they wouldn't get stuck when it swings. The next step is to attach the weight on one side. So I used the double sided tape to do this and this will go on the back of the panel. On the front side of the arm, this is where you'll attach the foam circle. So bef before removing the top backing piece from the circle, you'll want to push it through the hole on the panel. And this fit was pretty snug and the arm didn't really want to move as you can see here. So I had to use my crop dial to make the hole a little bit bigger. And once I did this, it worked like it was supposed to. 
After placing the foam circle through the bigger hole, I removed the adhesive backing from the circle and attached the top of the image to it on the front side. Next, I cut some strips of foam tape and attached it to the back side of the panel. You want to make sure you don't put the tape anywhere that will keep the arm from swinging side to side. So I pretty much framed this whole thing and then added a few more strips across the bottom. The main thing is you want that arm to swing back and forth. So even though I stamped the sentiments earlier on the white cardstock, I thought that the white on the green background was too distracting. I wanted to keep the mouse as the focal point. So I decided to do some white heat embossing on top of a scrap piece of that same green color. And I thought the half inch strip would be big enough, but it was just a hair too small. So I had to switch up to the three quarter inch size. And the grids on the front of the Misty are great to use to make sure you place things on straight, but I don't know if you can tell or not in this video, but I did not pay attention to it and I didn't get this lined up very straight. So I'll show you how I fixed it here shortly. But I inked up the sentiment stamp with the Versamark embossing ink and then I have added some white embossing powder on top. Now I'm using my reverse tweezers to hold this down while applying the heat. And I like to come in from both sides with my heat gun to prevent warping. So you'll want to apply the heat tool to both the front and the back and constantly after letting the heat gun warm up for about 30 seconds. Now since I stamped this kind of crooked, I had to cut this down a bit so I just made this into a banner off camera. And I attached these thin foam strips to the back across the top and the sides, but not the bottom because I want the image to be able to swing freely underneath this sentiment. So then I removed the adhesive backing and attached it on top of that light string. Again, I tested to make sure it would still swing like it's supposed to. Then I removed the adhesive backing from the tape and I rubbed my anti-static powder tool all the way around the inner part of that foam tape frame where the arm will be swinging. This helps to remove any stickiness that may be on the sides so that the arm doesn't stick to it when it's moving around. And then I checked to make sure the foam tape was thicker than my washer. You may have to add another layer of foam tape if it's not. But this washer is pretty thin. You may need more foam tape if you're using a penny. And then I attached this to my card base. For my finishing touches, I added some red rhinestones to each side of the banner. And I also added some Nuvo drops in Morning Dew on top of those red lights. This dries clear, so it will give those Christmas lights a nice shine once it dries. And here is the finished card. I just love how fun this interactive card turned out, and it's super easy. I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Tell me if you like making interactive cards and if you've ever made a pendulum card. This was my first swinging card ever and it was super fun to make. I think if I made this again though, I'd probably have my brother scan and cut, try to cut out the image or maybe use a white background so you can't see that white outline so much. But I think anyone would enjoy receiving an interactive Christmas card like this. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy crafting!